Yeah, hi guys, uh, it's Michael again. You know how much I love making videos for you. <laughs> so, here's another. What you see here is this FPGA starter board, this Spartan 3E, exciting Spartan 3E starter board, a very richly featured starter board. And uh, it's connected, to, it has an integrated platform cable. You know, you need this platform cable to, uh, well, to program. To, to configure, as it is called, the FPGA. Well, as a Linux user, you have a certain problem here. The problem is that um, you need this commercial driver, which is called Win driver or something. This is the uh, Xilinx platform cable driver. The problem is, uh, with this platform cable driver is that it just does not work, and that every new kernel update you get, it breaks, and so it doesn't work. So. As this almost, uh, almost drove me crazy, uh, I looked how I could circumvent this problem and I found something on this web page, um, which is a, a special uh, library you can preload. So the whole thing, the impact tool, which you use to program the FPGA, the Xilinx FPGA, uses libusb, right? You look at the address, you can download it. Uh, you can build it. Uh, those are the supported cables here, and uh, the one that is um, already used is uh, the cable USB SPARTA 3 starter kit. That, that's the one I use. Um, and the cool thing is it supports older web packs, um, like 10.1 or 9 and even 8 uh, versions. And the, uh, you'd use it, and then you build it, and uh, then you make yourself a little start script and this is what's commented here because there's a second method which I explain in shortly and you use LD preload and then the library, this libusb driver, you preload it to the Xilinx um, well, impact binary yeah, this is the binary and using this you will no longer need this darn uh, cable wind driver right, because it doesn't work anyways uh, cannot be built on my machine. And then there is since uh, I, I guess 11.1 .1 or is it 11.0 I'm not so sure. There is a second method because um, the community cried about this because it doesn't work and then um, they convinced Xilinx to build in libusb support themselves so that is now an official libusb support but it is very well hidden and um, because you need this environment variable, Xile, uh, impact, use libusb1. This is what you need. And then it wouldn't work just by using this. There is, in the Xilinx directory, here, say you install this thing to opt Xilinx, blah, 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 and then there is under bin, and then the platform, there's an install script, install drivers, and there is this, um, this uh, setup, PC, PC USB, this script, you need this script, and this script creates UDEF rules, right? It creates UDEF rules um, that makes it possible uh, for the system to identify um, this uh, libusb driver you use. So, um, that's the trick. And um, you see this UDEF rule, this is the one I created myself. This is the one you need if you want to use this alternative open source libusb support driver. You also need a UDEF rule. Um, looks like this. And, well, well, is it? Yeah, I guess that's UDEF rules. That's, I guess, the libusb driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. And, but this is uh, described on the homepage as well, so I don't have to go into too much detail here. Um, uh, Somewhere here there is a readme, or uh, is it in the package it, it itself? You need to read it, um, and then it works. And you probably need ah, that's that's what you need here. You need a tool here, and this is the next uh, thing that nobody uh, this is so poorly documented. Although it is a so mighty feature, um, you need this little uh, tool which is called uh, well, let's check it out. Um, Right. This is the, those are the UDEF rules uh, created by this PC setup USB script here, um, and you need this FX load tool. So under SUSE, for example, you can just say zipper install FX load. 
you need this preload firmware stuff, and this is a, a system tool. You need this, and um, if you don't have it, it won't work either. So install this, and then now comes the tricky part. Um, starting uh, impact uh, with with this script here. Let's do this. This is impact. Well, it asks me whether I want to create. Let's make this boundary scan. Come on. Probably has yeah. Um, uh, so I say I want uh, a new project. Yeah, and then uh, configure driver zero JTAG and boundary scan and blah blah. So oh, that's it. It's al it already that's it. It already worked. Here's the log. So now you are connected. Well, great. Nothing there. Well, that's uh, this is the there are um, CPLDs there, and th this is the FPGA, the large FPGA. What's going on? I hate this dialogs in this tool. I really hate it. So can I use it now? Yeah, great. So. Let's do something like, um, well, get device signature, right? So, succeeded. Can you see something there if you do this? Well, let's do it again and check out if you can see something there. Uh, oh, you don't. When you program it, you'll see that there's some activity, but you don't see it like that. Well, it's too short. Oh well, anyways, it does work. And this is the log file. Works perfectly. So now you could use it uh, programming Linux. And this is the the trick. I mean, it doesn't. You won't need this darned uh, Win driver anymore, which doesn't work anyway. So I hope for users of, of these exciting tools, um, this is some help because it is very poorly documented and uh, yeah, have a lot of fun.